everyone, and welcome to another lesson of chemistry. This is going to be lesson number six. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about equilibrium today. So we're going to be talking mainly about how can we describe a physical equilibrium. So in the picture that we were just looking at, can you tell me what this person is exactly trying to do? Yeah, the person in the picture is trying to balance those stones. They're eventually going to try to make a stone spire. Now, this does require perfect balance, or in this case, it requires the stones to all have the same balance with one another. You could technically say that this entire spire right here is in equilibrium. It's balanced. It is using all the weights of the stones going up and down to create balance. So what exactly is equilibrium? Equilibrium is defined as the state of balance between two opposing processes taking place at the same time and at equal rates. So for instance, in our stone example, we have gravity, which is one force of the stones pushing all, pulling all the stones downward. And at the same time, we have all the stones reacting to the mass of the stones above them by pushing back. In this example, after the definition, we have if a person A, we'll say the person in the blue shirt is person A, is to be jumping at all times, what do you think is going to happen to these two window cleaners? Well, I can guarantee you that this guy is gonna fall if this guy were to jump. So if person A over here were to jump, we would have this end of the entire panel or scaffolding go upwards, and this person, person B over here, would end up falling down. This is not at an equilibrium. To be at equilibrium, both of these individuals will have to stay completely still the whole time, or they're going to have to move up and down at the same rate. This way, they remain balanced or in equilibrium with one another. So before we go any further, I'm going to use an example we probably have all seen in a bottle of water on a hot day. We notice that we have these arrows going up and going down. Now what those arrows represent is a forward and reverse reaction. So we have liquid water down here in the bottom of the flask, and as it starts to heat, we get water vapor that goes up into the flask as a gas. You probably notice this when your water bottle at the top gets a little bit misty. So the forward reaction means that the water is in liquid form and it is going to move into its gas form. However, once the water turns into a gas up here, it eventually is going to go through a reverse reaction or this bottom arrow right here. And what this means is the reverse reaction means that the water that became a gas is going to change back into a liquid. It's in equilibrium with itself. We're not losing water. We're not gaining any water. It's staying in the same amount of mass. It's just changing its physical form. That's all. So we have our forward and our reverse reaction where we have a liquid going into a gas over here as our forward reaction. It's taking an energy and that's releasing its energy and it's going back down into its liquid form. So when equilibrium is reached in a chemical or a physical system, we're going to have the rate of forward and reverse processes equal to each other. So imagine your water bottle. There's no one time that when your water bottle is out in the sun and it gets a little bit misty in there, that all of the liquid water has turned to mist. In fact, it remains at an equilibrium. There's going to be an equal amount of water and an equal amount of mist at all times. This is because the concentrations of the substance or the amounts of them will remain constant throughout. So going back to our example of the flask of water, 
The flask is a closed system and no matter can escape from it. So we re retain the same amount of mass. We are not adding water. We are not removing water. Eventually though, the liquid water in the flask, it's going to start to evaporate into a gas and that's the forward reaction that we have. And since it's in a closed system, the water gas will condense back down into a liquid because it can't go anywhere. It can't evaporate out of the flask because we have a stopper in there. And then at a certain time, the rate of evaporation is going to equal the rate of condensation back into a liquid water. So the liquid level will always remain the same. And this means that the water in the flask has reached its physical equilibrium. We're gonna have the same amount of water, liquid, as we do water in a gas form. And anytime we reach equilibrium in a reaction, we use both arrows, both the forward and the reverse arrows to show that it can go really either way. So a couple of other physical equilibrium examples is something like bromine. If we had elemental bromine, which is a diatom, we would have it in a liquid and a gas form because just as liquid bromine were to sit there, it would actually just start to evaporate. And if we were to put it into a flask or a beaker, as we see in this example, we would actually start to see the misty bromine evaporating out of its liquid form, but then it would go back down into its, uh, it would evaporate into its gas form and go back down to its liquid form also iodine. Now, what do these two elements have in common? So, a solution for equilibrium problems. The definition is that this occurs in a closed system in which a substance is dissolving in a liquid. For instance, we could take salt and we could break it down in an aqueous solution. What did it mean when we had aqueous solutions? That's right, it meant that we broke down this solid ionic compound in water. So we've actually separated the ions into a positive sodium ion and a negative chlorine ion. So equilibrium exists between the dissolved and the undissolved particles here because there's only a certain amount of salt that we could actually dissolve in a certain amount of water. So the forward reaction here is going to be dissolving and the reverse reaction is going to be what? Crystallization. This is when we have the salt crystals precipitate and turn back into a crystal. So the rate of dissolving the solids and crystallizations of ions are equal and it happens in a saturated solution. And what this means is that if we were to add more salt to this, it would just end up as crystals in the bottom of the entire uh, solution. The amounts of solid and ions will remain constant in the solution. We're only gonna be able to dissolve a certain amount of salt in a certain amount of water when we start to see the salt pile up on the bottom of the glass, this just means that it has reached its saturation point. So dissolving more salt in it is also gonna cause an equal amount of salt to crystallize in the bottom of the glass. In summary, at the end, you should be able to define a forward reaction, a reverse reaction, an equilibrium between a reaction, the rate of reaction, what concentration is, and you should know this from our previous lesson, what a solution is. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this little movie about different forms of equilibrium. Let me know if you have any comments in this question right here. Thank you and have a nice day.